Lord be with you. So we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness today. And if you have a prayer request, you can uh, put that on Facebook as well. Let's stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. For his sake, forgives you all of your sins. It's a called and ordained minister of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. 
Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Be seated for our readings today from Scripture. Our first reading from the prophet Amos looks ahead to the day of the Lord, the return of Christ, and our call to practice justice and righteousness. A reading from Amos chapter 5. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have to wait for the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. And if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leased his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him, is it not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fat animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of the harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, Aha, aha. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which describes the return of Jesus, and that even though we grieve our dead in the Lord now, we grieve in faith and in hope. Paul writes, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do, have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? The 
reading, Jesus tells a story or parable about being ready for his return. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will be not enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. While they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our gospel reading, and what we just sang about as well, describes being ready for Jesus, making sure that we take care of ourselves. He's coming back to check on us. We believe as we confess in the creed, right, that Jesus will return, that there is a world to come. He's coming back. At the end of the gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, and I'm coming back the same way I just went up. In our prayer last Sunday for our nation, in church we prayed, Almighty God, 
to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges. Guide us now. We have powers and privileges, which Jesus has entrusted to us here as Christians to be ready for Jesus. Jesus will come back one day, but he also knocks at our heart every day, doesn't he? He knocks at the heart, rings the doorbell, texts you, whatever way Jesus finds to get our attention. And he wants us to be ready when we get that text, to text back. In the parable or story Jesus tells, we are waiting for the groom to arrive. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that the church is a bride and that Jesus is the groom. Heaven is the ultimate wedding party. And every Sunday, right, is like a dress rehearsal for that wedding party. Every Sunday, we've got a little foretaste of the feast to come. You've got to keep your lamps burning for this, right? To keep the faith for Jesus. To do that, you need oil, right? To need oil in those old lamps to keep it burning. Without oil, you can't light the lamps, meaning you can't see in the darkness. And in the Bible, the darkness is a time of trial. The darkness is a time of confusion. The wise keep enough oil in the story, right? Jesus arrives. They're ready. They actually take extra oil. They light their lamps. They see Jesus. They find their way to the party. The foolish stick around. They're there, but they're fickle, right? They don't see the big picture. They just live week to week. They're not planning. There's not enough oil. They're there, but they haven't thought ahead. When Jesus arrives, they don't have the oil to light the lamp. They have to go buy some, waiting to the last minute, right? Because that's kind of how they've lived. They go and they miss the party. The foolish and fickle want the wise ones, right, the prepared ones, to give them a little of that oil. Remember, they got extra. But the wise refuse. There won't be enough oil for us to go out and see the master, even with extra might sound harsh, right? Someone asks for help, we're prone to give it, and many times we should. But here, it's wise not always to help, at least not in the final point. You see, Jesus says, love others. What's the other part of that passage? As you love yourself. And self-love, in the Christian idea, is not just feeling good about ourselves, or not putting ourselves first, or thinking we're number one and everyone else is wrong, and we got our party and there's the other party. That's not what this love is about. That's selfish love. We got enough of that, don't we? A lot of selfish love everywhere you go. No, this kind of love is not selfish love. There's no division here. But it means loving yourself because God loves us. Seeing yourself as loved and wonderfully made by God, redeemed in Jesus. We might call this a theology of self-care, taking care of ourselves. We don't want to burn out on our relationship with Christ. And to be really there for others, we need to make sure that we're there with Jesus. You see, Jesus is our strength and power. From him we have all the privileges and powers that we have. And what are those privileges and powers? Forgiveness, peace, wisdom, discernment, guidance in all aspects of our life. The privilege that when we got a problem, Jesus will be there to hear us. Jesus is that primary relationship. And with Jesus empowers secondary relationships with others. Jesus gives us power and peace, right, to empower those relationships. And our primary relationship with Jesus shows us that we need to care for ourselves, love others as you love yourself. There are many ways to take care of ourselves. I've gained pandemic pounds. I need to exercise more. I've got a lot of excuses like everybody else. That's part of it. We all need to get enough sleep, sure. But we hear all this already, don't we? And usually we focus on the cares and needs of our body, which are important. Temples of the Holy Spirit they are. But what about our spirit? What about our soul? What about our spiritual health? It's hard enough to eat well and exercise, but what about our souls? Are we eating well? 
Are we exercising the soul spiritually in prayer and discernment? You know, the primary way to take care of ourselves, bodies, and spirits is actually to open the heart, to let God love us, to have an open soul that knows it's poor in spirit, but yet wants to be filled with the goodness that Jesus gives, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And with the help of God's grace, right, this becomes possible. It's like exercising. It's hard at first, get a little winded. But over time, right, over time, we realize that God fills the soul, that God has made us in his own image. Scripture says we're beautifully and wonderfully made. And the unity of body and soul is so profound that it goes to the very essence of who we are. God made us body and soul body and spirit that we would realize just how privileged and how loved we are by God. That God in Jesus is the source of our wonder, our power, our privileges. St. Catherine of Siena, a long time ago, she described it this way. You, God, she writes, are taken in love for me. For by love you created me and you have given us life so that we would love God. All love given for me and love for our lives to be seen as given by God. If you go in the parish hall, maybe you're out there after talking, it's a good idea, checking in with each other. You go in there, you know what you can see on the wall? You're going to see verses about Thanksgiving. Thanks to those who put those up. Verses about Thanksgiving. A lot of verses in the Bible about Thanksgiving. November is the time of giving thanks. We're almost there around the corner. Made it, almost. And this year, Thanksgiving won't be the same. Social distancing. It's an ongoing pandemic. But Thanksgiving can pretty much endure that, I hope. It's really about giving thanks in all circumstances. And the Bible says if you only give thanks in good circumstances, it's not all circumstances. This is a year where we can give God thanks in a different circumstance, can't we? You see, back to the parable... When we keep the faith, we make sure we have Jesus in our hearts and minds and souls. That's how we're supposed to love God. We're ready for any time. We're ready for all circumstances. You see, it's at night when Jesus appears. And night in the Bible, right, is a time of confusion and struggle and temptation. There's mourning at night, meaning mourning from death, but joy in the actual mourning time of resurrection. It's right at the time of struggle and temptation that the groom Jesus appears. In a dark night of the soul, that's when Jesus comes knocking. And he might not be there, right, when you want him. He's always right on time. Always right on time. And many of those times are in the tough times. And that's why we prepare, don't we? That's why we have self-care. To love others means to love ourselves, means to let God love us in Jesus. And let God feed us in Jesus. And let God fill us with the Holy Spirit in Jesus. I think our parable asks us today, right, how are we doing with our spiritual self-care? With letting God love and empower us in Jesus. How are we doing not only with physical care? We hear a lot about that. Got the mask on. What about the spiritual care? Remember what the book of Ecclesiastes says, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time even, and I'll add it in, for a pandemic and a time for hope, a time to take care of ourselves and a time to take care of others. Don't wait, right, to do so. Make sure you're feeding the soul as well. And make sure we're using our privileges and powers in a humble way, by God's grace in Jesus, because that's how Jesus gives them to us. They're precious, aren't they? To give God our cares and concerns so we can bear the cares and concerns of others. Jesus is with us, even lives in us, and he gives us that forgiveness and peace. That's when the Spirit fills us with power. With enough oil of happiness, the Bible puts it, right? 
oil of happiness, enough fuel of faith to keep the lights burning. The lights are still on. The offerings are still coming in. Let's go forward in faith in our own lives as well to pray along, O oh God, that you are taken in love for me and by love you created me and you have given us this life to live to the fullest. Amen. I invite you to stand. We turn to page 11. Together with our sisters and brothers in Christ throughout the world, we confess the Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. In one Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who receives from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I believe in one... I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we have some prayer requests today. As we go before our Lord in prayer, that privilege that God hears us, promises to be with us. So from uh, Bonnie and Donna, prayers for uh, Donna's husband, Bonnie's father. Prayer request for, from Tally Sue for uh, comfort for Anita, um, uh, mother-in-law for Tally Sue as she uh, grieves the um, death of her husband. Praying uh, for Grant as he faces the last week of his college semester. Pray for all of our college students as well. Uh, it's been a tough term, but we pray they keep hanging in there. So we go before our Lord in prayer today. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we are reminded in today's gospel that we know neither the day nor the hour when you call us to your divine presence. We pray that we would always remain aware of this and prepared to meet you joyfully when you call us. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For the church here and everywhere, that we may firmly believe in the promises of Christ and be vigilant in keeping ourselves ready for his return and proper spiritual care. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Pray for the people of our country, United States, that at this time we are blessed with peace and unity and purpose for the betterment of all citizens and residents. We pray as well for newly elected leaders, that they may rely on God's divine law as a source of wisdom and build a spirit of cooperation that promotes peace and healing. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For blessings this week as we remember all veterans and their families. O oh Lord, that you would be with all those who serve in the military worldwide, that you would watch over them and guard them and keep them. Receive our prayer, O oh God. For an end to this pandemic, that the Spirit will bring healing to the ill, shelter to the vulnerable, and perseverance to those working on a vaccine. Receive our prayer, O oh God. For our prayer requests that we have, for Donna's husband, Bonnie's father, for Anita, for Grant, for all of our college students and students, for those that we now name in our hearts to you, O oh Lord. That the tenderness of the Father's love will provide for them in each and every way. Receive our prayer, O oh God. God of love, renew our hearts, inspire our love, and transform our actions so that we may be true to the message of your Son. O oh God, protector of all those hope in you, bless us, keep us safe, and defend us, and prepare us that we, free from sin, 
we may persevere always in your love to the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace. All right, well, we keep uh, going on faith here, so please remember your offerings as we, uh, we finance on faith, don't we? <laughs> so please give those. You can give those securely online or right here, and you may be seated as we sing our offer song. stand. Let us pray. Wise and gracious God, receive the labor of our hands, these gifts of money, bread, and wine, along with the offerings of our lives. Nourish us with the life of your Son, that we might be for body in the world, making known your abundant mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O God, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you enriched the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water, you molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own, that we also, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit called us the life and death of Jesus. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. So do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when with all the world made perfect through your wisdom, all of our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and upon this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life. 
whose fire rouses us to love, enfold in your arms all who share this holy food, and nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and in every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, in him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because in the Spirit of Christ, we've received adoption as daughters and sons of God. We dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ for you. body of Christ for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ for you, the body of Christ for you, the blood of Christ for you. for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. of Christ. 
Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Jay, the body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage. And on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I think we have announcements today. I think so. So November uh, 
14th at 10 a.m. Uh, for Women of Faith. Yeah. All uh, sisters in Christ invited. All right, we'll go out with our blessing. So it's on page 19. May God our Father inspire and strengthen us in our work of faith. May Christ Jesus, our brother, motivate us and sustain us in our labor of love. May the Spirit, our helper, establish and build in us steadfast hope that our living may be reason for thanksgiving and give glory to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. show. Sure.
peace, remember the poor, and serve the Lord.